Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Art and I are with our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrica. It's so good to see you again, Michelle. Hi, John. Hi, Art. Hi, Michelle. Love and relationship coach. That's Michelle Fabrica. Tell us something about relationships. Sometimes people in a relationship for a long time. How do you just keep it going? Sometimes you need to freshen it up a bit. Do you have any advice for us on in, in that area? I do. I do. I, in fact, I have two experiential exercises I want to share with you today. Two. But um, two, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just, you know, like a garden, right? I mean, a love relationship takes tending. It takes attention. Uh, you can't just plant the seeds and commit to each other or something and expect it to grow and be healthy, right? So, you know, in the beginning, there's the excitement and that can keep things going, the newness, but, you know, um, and we're eager to learn about each other. That's often true in the beginning, but as time goes by, whether it's a couple of years or a decade or more, you know, we stop paying close attention to the other sometimes. And um, it, it's easy to get complacent and lazy. Mm. It is. Uh, it, it's, I don't know if it's uh, complacent and lazy. It's just sometimes it's comfortable just to do the same thing over and over and you fall into a rut. Mm. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. Oftentimes we need to we need to revitalize. Yeah. Yeah. And I've talked about this in another video. I think you talked about intimacy, right? In to me, you see. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's almost like I want to take a moment and just let that sink in, right? Into me, you see. And are we taking that time? And that's kind of what these two exercises are about. So you've got two exercises. These are things that a couple can do together. Yeah, yeah. And it could be, I mean, it could even be with a dating couple. It doesn't have to be somebody who's been together a long time, but it's, you know, they're really simple. So how about I just yeah. dive into one to them? Okay, Ab great. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So one of the things I, um, I like to invite people to do to get closer to each other and to get to know each other better is to really be, you know, set aside some intentional time to just sit together, ideally facing each other, Maybe you're touching, holding hands or, you know, two chairs facing each other, whatever's comfortable for you. And to just sit and be together, kind of in silence to start. And then the idea of obviously be me to be prepared because I have some other things I want to uh, join in. But that's the beginning part of anything of this little focus, kind of experiential time together. And, you know, have some questions set aside. And some of the questions that I like to, you know, invite people to use what are your greatest joys now? Or, you know, what are your biggest concerns now? And you maybe set a timer, you don't, but you take time to just let that person talk about that and share that. And you really listen because, and notice it's about the now, not like, oh, I wish this were that way or something. And maybe that is one of their concerns right now, but it's really getting present with the other person because that's where connection happens really is in that moment where you're both taking the time to be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's, uh, you both have to be ready to share. Yeah. And, 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 and no distractions, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And reveal your feelings. Yeah. yeah. Another one is if you could travel somewhere, you know, where would it be and why? And so you're kind of just trying to, I want like invite, like stoke the fires of your curiosity about each other. Cause I, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to learn something new when you, when you, you might even learn something new about yourself when you have this attention from your partner with you holding, you know, the space, you know, if you will, to receive what's what's going to come up for you. It so seems like it seems like the problem the problem that you're you're uh, forcing people into is to get out of their comfort zone. 
with a, a partner in order to re-examine it. And uh, the message that you seem to be giving is that forget about the uncomfortable part about it, is just get over that because it can open up a lot of new worlds for you and get, get you out of like a malaise, out of a habit uh, and, and taking each other uh, for, uh, for granted, if you will. Yeah, except, I mean, it's interesting when you say get out of your comfort zone. I'm almost, I mean, it's kind of like that because it, it is a little uncomfortable to sit maybe and have, you know, a deeper conversation, but it's also getting into a really comfortable space together where it's all welcome, where we're willing to really listen. So it's, it, there's a paradox there. So, Michelle, in this exercise, how important is the question? Is it is it important that the question go or the answer goes deep? It's obviously a listening exercise for one person. Yeah. And a what a digging deep feeling, revealing your feelings, innermost deep feelings for the other yeah. person. Is that right? That's accurate? right. Yeah. And that's kind of a it's gotta be take a willingness on each person, you know, the speaker to be willing to you know, reveal, you know, as much as they feel comfortable. I mean, you know, obviously sure. this is an extra you do on a, you know, fifth date, maybe, you, you know, whatever. It's different than somebody you've been together with for a long time. So a willingness on that partner to share and the willingness of the other person to be willing to just hear it and listen yeah, and not respond, not, you know, maybe later you can circle back and what did you really want to go to, you know, to bed and how would we do that? And, you know, whatever, yeah. I'm just making something up, but it's like, it's just letting them dream into something for themselves. Like if it's, you know, joy or concern or whatever. So it's really about inviting that curiosity because sometimes we don't always even take the time for ourselves to be, you know, into me, you see, we can have intimacy with ourselves or we cannot. We can kind of just be skating over the surface of what's really important to us and not bringing that forth. And it helps either with, you know, a, a loving partner or even, you know, that's why people see a coach or see a therapist or, or you know, a, a counselor. It's like, what, what do I really want in my life? What, and can we be that for each other in a, in yeah. a partnership or even in a friendship? Right. I mean, that's part of what the role we might play. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it does sound like, um, an important exercise in the sense that, and, and obviously you can take turns, but the timing, as you pointed out, you've got to find time to do this because the timing of listening is really mm -hmm. important. If somebody's pouring their heart out to you, which is what the goal of this is, you really have to take the time to appreciate what they're saying and listen to it, not comment. Right. And maybe just uh, say thank you. Like, yeah. just say thank you. Thank you, thank for, you for being honest. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks yeah. for sharing this with me. Right, right. And yeah. um, and so it's, it's um, yeah, that's... Um, it, it, tell me if I'm wrong, but do men in general find it harder to listen than women? Um, when I say listen, I mean listen without... What? Yeah. Without commenting, yeah. without offering advice, without getting <laughs> defensive, without, you know. Without immediately just dismissing it. Without immediately d dismissing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to make any enemies here, but I mean, I, I would ahead. say there, this, is, this is what comes down to it, I think, is that a lot of, I've seen this with men in, um, in my coaching, a lot of men are uncomfortable when their partner is upset. So when their partner's upset, they want to solve it, but it's not to solve it necessarily. It's to help their partner feel better. And what really would help their partner feel better in most situations is just the listening. Yes. Yeah. And to take, you know, whatever emotions might be coming up. It's like if you take attention and bring attention to that by itself, then after the emotions are sort of, you know, they, they dissipate over time once we have our, you know, say we settle a little bit and then, and then there's time for problem solving and that skill can be useful. But initially to listen, 
you don't have to do anything. There's no yeah. job here except to just not do anything. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I think I could be wrong, but I think for men, that's a hard lesson to learn. Just I listen. Yeah. Even so. for I somebody as sensitive, us. John, even for somebody as sensitive as you, or you, are you including yourself in the in in the? Oh, in, in, absolutely. Uh, so, so Michelle, well, what's the second? Yeah. What's the second yeah. exercise? Yeah, yeah. Well, the second exercise is very similar, but this is rather than the question, it's kind of a repeating sentence. So it's a. This is a question that we um, an exercise I, I learned through the Human Awareness Institute. They, uh, it's a nonprofit organization. They offer in-person and online love and intimacy and sexuality workshops. And I'm actually a, a volunteer with them and I do some work with them to support people in the workshop. So, but basically it's, you set aside time, same thing, uninterrupted and, and face to face. And then, you know, like the same thing with a timer, maybe five minutes, three minutes, whatever. And the question is something like, or the sentence fragment, one of the ways I feel loved by you is, and then you answer it. And then the person just says, thank you. One of the ways I feel loved by you is. And so what it is, is that that question is like the, the person who's talking, the speaker is just continually, wow, what, you know, when you um, bring me my coffee in the morning, or, you know, when you come kiss me, when you come into the door and see me for the first time that day, or, you know, just these, whatever it is, right? Or, you know, when you fix my car up, so I had, um, Dave did this early in our dating life, he put in, the, you know, I had a really old car, he put in like a Bluetooth system so I could play music on my phone, my car. Anyway, so just whatever it is. And then, so anyway, back to the repeating sentence. So you say, and then the person says, thank you. And you do that for maybe five minutes, just that session. And then you swap and the other person, one of the ways I feel loved by you is, yeah. Thank you. So it's it's real simple, but it's just helping some, you know, it's it's helping you reveal this experience to your partner. Well, yeah, I can I can mm -hmm. see how both uh partners would benefit. I mean, obviously I'm digging deep to tell you what I love about you, what I what I like you to do for me, you know, one of the yeah. ways I feel loved by you. Yeah. And the other partners learn is getting the benefit of somebody saying, I love it when you do this. I, I just exactly. love you. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the question win -win. can be, yeah, right. It can be, you know, one of the ways I feel loved by you is, or one of the things I love about you is, yeah. or even, you know, I mean, you can make up your own, of course, but I had, a, you know, a few in mind, something I would like to try with you is. Sure. And that could be, you know, a sexual thing. That could be a non, that could be a, you know, a restaurant. It could be just, um, who knows, you know? So it's just, it's, but it's helping you get curious inside you and then revealing that to your partner. Yeah. And um, it, it's, um, it can be really, you know, fascinating to, oh, I didn't know that meant that much to, you know, later after the exercise, you know, both have a chance, take time, to share your experience of what it was like yeah, and maybe ask further questions yeah. and then try it and s try the things that were revealed. Um, but I, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna bring you closer. And, and, you know, I think the idea of setting aside 10 minutes or whatever it is and making it quiet time and facing each other really sets the mood for the reception the digging deep inside yourself and the reception for what you're hearing. I think that's important too. Definitely. Well, Michelle, yeah. If, and if, if yeah. you could, could you review both of those uh, uh, yes, exercises yes. again? Because I think they're really, really valuable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's do a recap. Yeah. So basically, the main thing to set up the exercise is to sit facing each other and set aside some uninterrupted time, you know, phones off, whatever, you know. You know, I would say you want to have at least, say, 20 minutes or something, but longer would be half an hour, whatever. You know, longer is greater, but you don't need that much. And you just decide to be together. You hold your hands, hold hands if you want, or hold each other's hands on your, you know, each other's legs. So take the time to set it up. And then it's either 
you have a you know repeated question like we just did you know one of the ways i feel loved by you is you got a timer going for five minutes three minutes and then the person says thank you one of the ways i feel loved by you thank you you do that for until the timer rings you say thank you and then you switch switch roles and at the end of it you take time to um share what it was like for you hmm. Did you want me to recap the other exercise too? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that, okay, yeah, the other one was a similar setup. It's just uh, one question to answer. What are your greatest joys now? And take five minutes or three minutes and that person shares whatever the answer that, to that question is. What are their greatest joys now? Or, or come up with your own questions and then you switch. So it's a similar kind of framework, just different different parts in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, quick quick uh, question. These are both very positive exercises. Um, what you described are, are f good feelings will come out of this. And my question is, is it a good idea or is it ever done in a, in a negative? So in other words, that first exercise of, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, what are you feeling now? Should you ever or could you ever say, what are your fears now? Is I mean, Ooh. You're be, you're, that's begging for for negativity. Ooh. Ooh, I like that though. I mean, I, I think that if it, you would need to choose wisely what you're both up for together. Yeah. So you know, if you're up for like, wow, I kind of feel like I want to have some create some yumminess here, some juice in our relationship. Let's look at what's working well. And what's working, you know, what's what are some good things happening. But I absolutely think that taking time to, what are your fears? Um, yeah. That's a beautiful question to, to you know, into me you see right to reveal. So I would think that's another. Um, I, I mean, I like your noticing of that. I mean, yeah, my intention here was the positivity and bring in, you know, bring in more of the love. But sometimes you learn things that are a struggle for your partner, and you can actually support each other better which leads to more a positive situation. So, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, one of the things I, you know, get annoyed about you is, you know, that's not gonna, it's better to phrase things into what you enjoy and what you want, right? You know, a complaint is a sure. want in disguise. I think I've used that quote before. Yeah, um, yeah. so, um, but I like, yeah, you can get really creative with this, these exercises, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I was hesitated to, I hesitated to ask that because it's always tricky to put it nicely. Some dangerous is what I was going <laughs> to 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 go into the negative, you know, to to delve into the negative. What's you know what's wrong? Or because it usually comes out. You do this. I don't like it when you do that. And you do and you do and you do and you know, and negativity almost always backfires. Yeah, yeah, I would so, agree with you. That's that's what I liked about your two exercises and why I hesitated to to bring up a a negative uh, version of it. But your two exercises are really wonderful because they're they're things you can do to, if you take the time and delve into each other. And you're you're right. What a way! What a wonderful way to revitalize your your connection to your your spouse, your loved one, your partner. Great stuff. Yeah, I hope our viewers give it a shot and, and comment about how it went for them. I yeah. hope so too. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.